Uh, friends, hi. Uh, welcome to this discussion on this topic, which is uh, credit value adjustment. Uh, we we understand that the standards today uh, are all talking about the fair values and and special focus on the fair value uh, uh, calculations would would normally expect us to look at the present value of cash flows in in most of the cases uh, in terms of, for example, financial assets or financial liabilities per se. But, but the very fundamental problem that uh, these uh, calculations have observed is that when we, when we look at, look at the, the present value of the cash flows, we, we tend to ignore the counterparty risk, especially when we are into a, a financial assets mechanism. Okay. So, so if I say, for example, I have an exposure, I've given some payment to somebody which, would, which is expected to come to me in a year's time of $100 million and my, and my discount rate is 5%, I can, I can certainly calculate the present value of that as $100 million divided by 1.05 to the power 1. Now, this would be something like 95. We can do this calculation maybe on the calculator. It would come at 95.24 million dollars, right? So per se, this becomes a fair value, right? But 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 in reality, there is there is a risk, which is referred to as a counter party credit risk okay so what we what we need to do here is that we need to assess what is the what is the value of this particular investment the amount given to the counterparty if this counterparty credit risk is also considered okay and and that's where we say we look at adjusting this amount right we need to make an adjustment to this amount something which is referred to as a cva or a credit value adjustment okay now how do we calculate that the the the, the thought process is fairly simple we simply assign the probabilities that there could be a default and there is of course there may not be a default right purely purely a binomial theory here okay now we are of course given here for example the numbers are the exposure as default is 100 million dollars there's a probability of default at 0.75 percent there's a recovery rate at 60 percent of course we have used this uh, five percent in case for the present value so what we're saying is what if a default happens right we are given of course the the probability of default at 0.75 percent but what if default does not happen then the probability would be 1 minus the probability of default which is 1 minus 0.75 percent right so we need to bring the expectations on that or the expected value looking at these two possibilities through the binomial model right so when we say that we are precisely saying if the counterparty defaults right my recovery rate is 60 percent right so whatever is my exposure i shall receive 60 percent out of that is it okay right but if it does not default then i shall receive the entire amount right what is the amount that we are talking about of course here is 100 million here right and basis these probabilities we are able to take the present value of these expected values to give us something called as the adjusted value after taking into consideration the counterparty credit risk so if we do this calculation very quickly we are saying with the calculations together
this is let's do this calculation here on the excel sheet and then we can pick those values and take the present value thereof so my numbers are 0.75% multiplied by 60% into 100 okay and then we have 1 minus 0.75% multiplied by 100 okay now these two would give me a value of 0 0.45 right so we've got these two values which are 0 0.45 okay and this is coming at 99.25 right this gives me a total of of course 99 point seven zero taking the discounted value with a five percent discount rate we come to a number which we have calculated as 94.95 here okay so what you are observing here is precisely that while the 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 fair value without counterparty risk adjustments was 95.24 the value after taking into consideration those counterparty credit adjustments it comes at 94.95 which means that we need to do a cva the credit value adjustment of 95.24 subject to that which comes at 0.29 dollars right so that is something which is the the concept to start with this is the most simplistic way we can understand the credit value adjustment the objective is fairly straightforward is that when you look at determining the fair values it's important to assess what is the the specific counterparty creditors involved in such values and that has to be adjusted or accommodated for those differences there right that's it in this particular section we, we would like to kind of do it a more complicated example looking at some interest rate swaps more in detail where it is not just a single cash uh, or, or, or a one-time cash involved but multiple times cash movements happening from both the sides so how do we look at that cva the credit value adjustment is something that we want to talk about in the next set of the discussions thank you very much good day take care bye bye